Thank you very much for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. I want to get to this near Grenada. This is Kikum Jenny. It's a volcano. It's an underwater volcano. Uh, it's had a history of eruptions. I'll, I'll get to that in a second in the biggest eruption it's had. But lately, there's been more seismic activity. Now, nothing we'd feel on the surface, uh, but there's a lot of readings being done. So Kikum Jenny, it's starting to kick up a little bit, and that is a concern. Now, uh, there's been releases uh, issued by the National Disaster Management Agency and with that, still on yellow alert. So it's holding at yellow alert. The next level up would be uh, orange in which uh, the seismic activity, that would mean it was getting even higher. Right now, at least over the last 24 hours, my last check, it's been kind of holding steady. There was some more activity this weekend. It's gone down just a little bit. So holding at a yellow alert. So what the heck does that mean? We're, well, here's a Grenada down through here. Again, the big island down here. Uh, this is where it is. There's an exclusion zone. The first exclusion zone uh, about a uh, 1.5 uh, kilometers there from the uh, the center and that's kind of an area to avoid because you see on the map submerged volcano that is where Kikum Jenny is if the it were to go to an orange or even more so there's a second exclusion zone which is a bigger area to stay away from but this is a concern because of the seismic activity we've been seeing as of late there's also Kikum Jack as far as the name is concerned uh, there's a couple theories uh, uh, one is that it's just a rocky area not rocky as far as actual rocks but uh, if you're going on uh, near this and uh, you're in a ship or something like that you could get kicked around a little bit uh, or there's some uh, old uh, tales that it may be from a donkey named Jenny so a few different uh, reasons uh, with that but here it is here's kind of a different perspective and this is one of the concerns with boating so with a little more seismic energy it releases more gases and what that means is if you're in some sort of ship or a boat and you're on top of this with these gas bubbles, if you will, the water as a whole is less dense right above it, and that may lead to some sinking. You could sink in this area, and that's why there are those exclusion zones, and that's why we keep an eye on this very carefully. You see here, this is Kikum Jenny, kind of a, a 3D modeling of it. So again, an underwater volcano, so you can't see it. But let me show you what's going on. Again, the activity, it's definitely up as far as, well, will it get worse? It's just kind of a wait and see. The outlook is uncertain as many times it is, but especially with a submerged volcano, it actually makes it a little bit uh, more difficult than a volcano that's that's not submerged. That yellow alert is in place. Now in 1939, there was a bigger eruption of this. This is when it really first became known. And there were a couple tsunamis, even a tsunami reaching Barbados, a small one, but one reaching Barbados. Uh, it impacted St. Vincent, the Grenadines, Grenada, of course. So again, uh, while this is underground, underwater, uh, with that said, uh, this, there is a tsunami tsunami risk out of this, even though it's pretty far underwater, 185 uh, meters or 607 feet below. That doesn't mean it's safe. If there's a bigger eruption, that could lead to uh, some tsunami activity. I've been seeing some stuff out there. Well, it's far enough below that there wouldn't be a tsunami. That's not the case. And it was not the case back in 1939. So again, watching this area very, very carefully for seismic activity. I will keep you posted on that. Thank you for spreading the word, but a definite, definite uptick on what's going on with uh, Kikum Jenny. Now, here we are in the Caribbean. Again, that's in the southeastern Caribbean. We have a nor'easter here, a big front that's draped all the way down through parts of the Bahamas and Florida over toward Mexico and a lot of snow in part near New York City over toward Hartford, Connecticut, back through Rhode Island, southern New England. England, and I'll zoom into Canada in just a second. Here's the tail end of the front. A lot of us have been dealing with some of that dust around, and that is still going to keep that air quality on the lower side. So let me start big, and then I'll zoom down, and then I'll get into the uh, forecast. So here, you can see that snow and that whiter shading there. There's the green that is rain, that coastal system just clipping by, and I'll zoom down into Canada in a second. The tail end of the front does move by Cuba and the Cayman Islands. We're going to see a wind shift over the next 24 hours. I want to show you those winds. They're going to be more out of the north. We'll get that northerly flow behind this system across the uh, northern Caribbean. So a little cool down, especially at night for some of us, but overall not a lot of rain. But here's what's next. Look down the road. This is by the time we get into Friday. A couple things are going to happen. One, 
uh, front moves in across the United States here. And the second thing, it's actually going to be uh, able to draw in a lot of moisture. So we're going to see a lot of rain building in this area by the time we get into the weekend. And we'll see how that plays into our weather as we go down the road. I'll be covering that in depth for you tomorrow. Now, let me jump here, then back into the Caribbean and then get into the winds. Uh, we get over toward Prince Edward Island, uh, Nova Scotia, uh, Newfoundland, for example. And you see just getting scraped by some snow. Could get some decent totals, but we're not looking looking at the historic snow we just had, center of this offshore, which is allowing it to pull down uh, colder air. So again, even tomorrow morning, still some of the snow over towards St. John's and then gradually working our way. But uh, along our coastal sections, we could even have some snow throughout the entire day tomorrow in uh, Newfoundland that would lead to some higher total. Center offshore, that allows it to pull down some colder air. Now here's the front that's working by the tail end of that, giving us a chance of some showers. Jamaica, some of us woke up to a few showers around. Jamaica, uh, Cayman Islands, Belize, Honduras over by Roton. We could see a couple showers even as you get over toward uh, Providencia. Guyana and Suriname, we've had some showers. Here is where uh, Kikum uh, Jenny is right over here in the uh, southeastern Caribbean. So that's the spot I'm watching. And then as we get into our Thursday, you see the tail end of the front here. So bah southern Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, uh, back through Puerto Rico, we could get a passing shower. But with that front, the winds will change. You see it, this is today. Winds are out of the north through Mexico, down through Belize and Honduras. The front sitting right about here, Bermuda, we've got those winds gusting to 50 miles per hour, 80 kilometers an hour. Then tomorrow, as that front moves away, the northerly flow, or at least northeasterly flow, Turks and Caicos, Bahamas, Cuba, stretching into uh, the Cayman Islands, even right on the edge of Jamaica. The winds may shift at least a little bit out of the northeast, and then we'll still have that northeasterly flow, but more of a due easterly flow across much of the Caribbean as we work our way into later this week. Gusty, the choppy seas are going to stay with us. So Jamaica, best chance of getting some rain would be today. Couple passing showers at times across the Cayman Islands. Rain chance 10 to 20% Trinidad and Tobago. The dust around. Barbados could see a few more passing showers, about a 30 to 40% chance. 30% chance today in St. Lucia. A limited chance in Grenada. Still some of the Saharan dust around. And a 20% chance St. Vincent in the Grenadines and of course in this region. Keeping an eye on any, any of that seismic activity that is related to Kickham Jenny. Uh, Martinique, rain chance 20% and holding at about a 30% chance in Dominica and another 30% chance in Guadalupe. So you may not see some showers. Some of us will though. Isolated showers, Antigua and Barbuda. Rain chance about 20%. That's it. St. Kitts and Nevis and Montserrat. 30% chance for today. Anguilla and St. Barts. Rain chance about 20%. St. Martin, Saba and Stacia. 30% the next few days in Puerto Rico. And again, we'll have some cooler nights really starting tomorrow night. Same thing, U.S. and British Virgin Islands. A 20 to 30% chance of a shower in choppy seas. Dominican Republic rain chance 20%. Holding on to about a 5, maybe 10% chance. Could get a couple sprinkles with the front nearby in Haiti. Bahamas, best chance of rain today than tomorrow. Southern Bahamas, still some spotty showers. Turks and Caicos with the uh, end of that front. We'll see a 30 to 40% chance tomorrow and Thursday. 30 to 40% chance in Cuba and about a 40 to 50% chance around Belize in the Yucatan of Mexico over by Cancun with that front that is moving in. Aruba, Curacao, and Bonaire would be a very straight chance of a shower watching those uh, choppy seas. Rain chance about 50% in Bermuda just as this system starts to move away and some of those gustier winds. Costa Rica and Panama, rain chance 20 to 30%. Elevated chance of rain in Guyana. Guyana keep me posted in the comments. Rain chance 40% today in Suriname and a 20 to 30% chance in northern Venezuela. So keeping a very, very close eye on Kikum Jenny, watching that cold front to the north, scattered showers and spots and cooler in our northern zones and watching the Saharan dust, especially in our southeastern sections of the Caribbean and monitoring the earthquakes. And of course, Kikum Jenny, keep me posted as well in the comments where you are and I hope you have a good rest of your day.